Welcome back to the Hacko Factory. It's finally time to get this bad boy tuned. We've been waiting for a few months for these beautiful wheels to be built or rebuilt or remanufactured, remanufactured I guess you'd call it, by Mark and the boys at Barrow Brothers. They are looking spot on. Gav loves them. If you don't like them, that's your problem. Do you like them, Alan? I yeah, like them. I do. You cool to see. You can't just put what's on every no, you can't. Okay, like use your imagination a little bit, people. Cool to see Hashino's in the five stud too. I've never seen them before, so I think they look really good. Mm. Mm. Once the wheels arrived, they gave us a bit more motivation to finish the car off. So we got a few more goodies over from from um, Nelson at Hartley Engineering. Some new front covers that are pretty much just uh, chain covers that just for bling really in this case but he's also engineered a cam sensor into them which we're not using but uh, for future use you can now have a cam sensor so you can run full sequential they're looking good we've also got air cleaners which we were waiting uh, also for um, they've all been fitted up and we've since got panel beta mark on the case and for now we've just cut the bonnet so if you're a purist you can go cry in the corner but we've chopped up the Hucko bonnet and the air filters are poking through. I actually like it. I reckon it looks cool I as. Probably not the most practical way of doing it, but for now, that's how it's going to be. And we'll work on a um, sort of a more long-term solution. Probably when... a disclaimer, I will say, we did try and find a suitable solution. Yeah, we, we, couldn't get there. we were looking at sort of carbon fibre or fibreglass and that sort of thing, but... As a one-off piece, it's not very practical at all. So for now, that's how it is. Um, it's metal, so it can be moulded. We will work something out later. Um, we've also fitted, refitted the whole interior. Matt's been in there a while back and remade the tunnel, and everything went in pretty well. Well, it did for me, because I didn't do it, but Woody and Gav didn't seem to have too many problems putting everything back together. It looks pretty much factory in there, so that's kind of cool. I think now all we need is just for the engine to run properly, which it doesn't. Yep. It's a pretty cranky engine. It's got ITBs, so a base map don't work too well on them. So we got it running as well as we can, and now it's time to load her up and take it down to see Kai at Andrews High Tech uh, for a dyno run. So let's go. Almost forgot to announce our winners of the Tool Pro OBD2 readers. The winners are Marcus Heilbrunn and Adam Murray. We've mess messaged you via YouTube if you want to get back to us uh, and we'll get your uh, slightly oversprayed OBD2 readers out to you. Well done, guys. One more thing we are heading to Rocky Nats in the city of Rockhampton, Queensland. It's basically a mini summer nats, but up north. So grab your car, grab some fresh rubber, do a bit of a road trip up to Rocky, drop some burnouts all over the town, only in designated areas though, mind you, and have a good time. It's on the Easter long weekend, April 15th to 17th. We'll be there. We're going to bring a couple of cars. We're going to have a good time. And if you're in Queensland particularly, you should be there too. Get on it. That Pajero though, how's those electric brakes treating you? They're good. They're good, eh? Red arc for the win. Toes all right. And I can smash the hazards on, we'll just go here, yeah? yeah? Of course it starts raining on the day. Isn't that why we need a hood scoop? Yeah. <laughs> all right, eh? Give us a shove. You good? Give us a shove. You're trying to push it back? Yeah. 
Watch out for the swing. Hey? Watch out for the... Yeah. Straight back, straight back, you're good. Well, that last drop's nasty. Pardon me? That last drop there's nasty. It is. I mean, I know it's your job, but it's funny how you just like just jump straight in there, right? Get, <laughs> get into it. That's it. <laughs> how are you, man? Oh, good, mate. Good, guy. How are you guys, mate? Yeah, really good, man. Really good. What are you up to, Alan? Uh, just giving the plugs some attention. It's obviously, never really run properly, so it's a bit. Must have fouled a few up. That's right. Remember a flashback to that VL episode and also the V12 episode, which I recently watched when I was looking for some footage. Never rev your untuned car, is what a wise man once said. He wasn't that wise, because he doesn't <laughs> practice what he preaches. <laughs> Alright, we'll just turn the LED light on, good to go. Get a bit of adjustment going. Alright, Mac, are you ready for your makeup, mate? Want a bit of powder and some mascara on there? I've done it all this morning, I'm ready. He puts that on every morning. I think it was just like number passenger side, driver side rear was the wet one. Yeah. But the rest of them are pretty shit. Oh, it's just really we just got to get them dry again, and then once we get on the dyno, we'll get them a little bit burned clean pretty quick. Mm. So, um, What's this stuff you got? Just mass airflow oh, sensor yeah, cleaner. Just, it's just like it e goes. It e leaves expensive no brake cleaner. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> expensive brake cleaner. Nice. You get the shit job? Yeah, always mate. Always. We measured up for some uh, brake cables that Hopper Stoppers are going to make us yesterday. they got a little chart that you fill in of how it's going to work. So we'll have a handbrake at some stage, hopefully. So we rolled in off the trailer, missing a couple of cylinders. She was a bit fouled up because we've been running it with a really, really bad tune. Uh, Kai has uh, sort of tidied all that up and we've pulled all the plugs out, cleaned them up, make sure the injectors are all good, not leaking or anything. Mac has bolted it up to the dyno. Of note, this is a Dynapack dyno. It is made in New Zealand, same as the engine, and it's actually hydraulic, uses hydraulic for lo oil for load. So uh, a little bit different to some of the other ones, but works yeah. good. Yeah. So what do you reckon? Nice and consistent for me. Yeah, we uh, got Nelson on the phone as well, which is good from the uh, over in New Zealand. Just uh, asked him about this engine combination. Obviously, they've done all the development on it, so he gave us some good information about uh, the valve train, what type of cam trains and stuff we're running, pistons, stuff like that, total timing that we'd be expecting to see, just what they saw on the engine dyno. So then what we're seeing here, if we're noticing any massive discrepancies, then we notice there's something not right. So yeah, but no, it was good. Nelson uh, straight on the phone and answered all our questions so it was great he's a good lad all right we're ready to roll. yeah i reckon let's do this let's go yes. hey dave good morning gavin how are you mate pretty good how are you you keen hello everybody <laughs> yeah very keen <laughs> oh nice in the merch store just in case you didn't know <laughs> www.theskidfactory.com Click it, get it, wear it, come get a photo with the car one day, wearing your merch. Yeah, yeah.
red line is RPM. Yeah. The green line is our programmed minimum oil pressure that we want to see, and the blue line is our actual oil pressure. So if you see, oil pressure's good. See, as the RPM's coming up, underneath the program limit which is that's dropping under 40 pounds like it's what Nelson was saying he wanted to see like 70 pounds to 80 pounds like he thought that's what it should be at so and it was it is there earlier in the RPM it comes up to 70 or 80 and sits there but as the RPM keeps coming up the oil pressure goes way away so all right we hit a bit of a snag that we were kind of aware of the possibility of so it's, that's what this sort of dyno testing for so it's in a controlled environment yeah so we would speaking with Nelson just with the way that the oil pan had to be modified we were a little bit worried that the stock oil pump might capitate uh, as we were starting to raise the RPM uh, I had already been aware of this so I'd already set up some limits in the ECU that if it's if they saw the oil pressure go below a certain point it was going to cut the engine off for me because the ECU is way better at looking at numbers than I am <laughs> you know what I mean and I, I'm pretty good at looking at numbers but I trust the computer over myself uh, and it snagged the oil pressure limit for me and then we've just verified that yeah uh, whenever we're getting the RPM up over about 3800 the oil pressure is starting to drop away it comes up and sits nice and rock solid about 80 pounds but then as the engine RPM continues to rise it starts to fall fairly aggressively in my opinion it also think, starts yeah, you can doing see it's that on the way like down um, so yeah which which to me would say it's probably cavitating or something like that so, the, so yeah. cavitations like uh, you know maybe getting air introduced into the the feed line yeah. so what we're going to do is uh, change the feed line route it's actually routed so it's not going to get wiped out by anything at the moment but for a start we'll change the, change the routing of it so it's uh, sort of as direct as it can be and then see if that uh, fixes the issue and then we'll address it later if it does yeah but at the moment we're held up at about 4,000 rpm we can't go any higher the oil pressure does not stay around for the party put a limit at three and a half thousand for gas yeah i need more than that <laughs> <laughs> i wouldn't have rev, rev that hard in <laughs> no. uh, it's running pretty sweet now though that's a good thing that it never ran properly when we had it because we're not tuners so it's uh, otherwise it's sort of behaving itself and idling nice and doing everything good oh that jacking spot's coming in handy now alan perfect yeah. Lucky knew this was going to happen. I know what's up. <laughs> Back up. Back side of this fold here, bros. Yeah. It's already been put on there. No, that's paper, scissors, rock. Yeah. That means I get to pour the oil in. <laughs> oh, it's just who's shouting lunch. That's you. <laughs> I'd rather do that than take the hot oil off. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you're gonna get oil everywhere. Oh yeah, it's gonna reach. That'll work perfect. Just Even just for uh, verifying if it's gonna work or not, you know. Whose idea was it to put a VK56 in a hacko with a custom sump and pickup? Gavs. Uh. I said VQ or. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody got time for VQs, bro. <laughs> Patience grasshoppers. Yeah, it's a bit like that, isn't it? Nothing but the finest lemon squash racing ore going back in this beauty. Bit of 69 420, full organic. What, 69 what was that? What else was it, Alan? <laughs> now with 10% real lemons. 10% real lemons, yeah. Whenever you check oil level, it's either always bang on or over full. That's what I find it's... anyway. Millimeters of bang on. Let's let's try it out.
see how it's squirreling done. away. Really, yeah, and it's just drop, 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 drop. It's the harder revving it, the less oil pressure we've got. It's literally like the exact opposite of what we want, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, it's it's pretty cool. It's so getting to. I, I backed out of it before it got to my program minimum um, because I could see which way it was going. It was just falling. You know what I mean? And even after I got off the throttle, it was still, still sort of falling. So, um, if I kept spinning that, that was just going to be a problem. What's the plan, Mr. Wolf? Uh, so, we're still, we've got better pressure now, but we're still seeing the same pattern, but it's just lighter. So, we're going to... Um, pull out the tube, the tube that actually goes through inside the sump, that's the pickup, um, we're going to pull that out and just cut it off because I've sort of made it to pick up from the centre because we're worried about oil surge. So we'll cut it off and just see if that's causing a, an issue somehow because it's a bit of a, an odd shape. It's like, a, it's like a tube with a slot cut out of it like that. So. This is it's the only way to do it. We'll just cut it off and see what happens. Mm -hmm. See if it fixes it. If it yep. fixes it, then we'll, it'll be, what do we do now? If it doesn't fix it, it'll be, let's look for the next thing. Don't know. Testing. It's a tool. Exactly. Well, this is the gadget. It's the oil pickup. That looks like some kind of instrument. <laughs> the other way looks, <laughs> it's too hot for that. <laughs> Got to go and get it nice and cut and see if it'll come. Yeah, if you grip this hard enough, it'll probably just... Why'd you have to appease to the YouTube comments, Alan? I shouldn't have, eh? I'm going to tell them off if it works, if it <laughs> fixes it. for today um, just after we just found the second wind coming in uh, as you'll see on the dyno graph if Woody shows you um, but we're still getting a, a slow decrease in oil pressure that is basically goes along with engine rpm so we know that it's going to keep decreasing and and it's not worth risking the engine um, we've still got an issue with obviously oil cavitation uh, foaming is probably what's going on so the oil is half it's half air, half oil, so it's, uh, you, can, you get compression, so the pressure goes away. We've got a few ideas about that, and you'll probably see it later on because we're going to have to fix it. But um, otherwise, you're happy with everything else? Yeah, otherwise everything else is working really good. It's just literally, I mean, that, that illustrates it pretty clearly there. The, the 
red line is engine RPM and the blue line is oil pressure. And as you can see, the higher we're turning it, the lower the oil pressure is getting. So we've called it where the oil pressure is still at not doing any damage, but if we keep spinning the engine any harder, it could risk it. So there's no point risking it when we could address the issue and come back another day. Sorry, now we're going we're, to this, uh, I've never experienced this before, so hey, we're learning. Never yeah. too old, as you can see, from my old ass. How about one of those dry sumps? Um, we're thinking of a moist sump rather than a dry sump. Okay, so it's so, slightly um, wet. We're not sure if that's the technical term for it, but it's <laughs> basically an external scavenge that feeds into a tank. It's kind of like a surge tank, I suppose, would be the easiest way to explain it. We have a pump driven off the crank that pulls the oil out of the, the sump, but it doesn't actually pressurise the, the engine. It then goes into a tank where it can settle down, then the pump, the original oil pump inside the, the engine, um, like a G-rotor pump, it can then supply the engine, which, which it's perfectly capable of doing as far as we're aware, and was never a problem on, um, on the dyno, um, on the engine dyno, yeah. obviously, but um, yeah, it's not on an engine dyno anymore, so. And it's not unheard of either. There's a lot of factory cars that have that sort of moist sump style that are uh, where they do exactly so, what we're talking yeah, about. Where Corvettes they have a, yeah, and Audi R8s yeah. and stuff like that. So not And also of. common in motorsport scene from my um, Googlings over the years, uh, just to have that set up. You Google moist sump? <laughs> we wouldn't recommend you do sump. that. <laughs> actually, I actually like you probably to. should do that. <laughs> That's what it's called. Not Full disclaimer, Skid Factory is not responsible for any, yeah. <laughs> any traumatisation by googling moist sump. <laughs> Imagine how many people are googling moist sump right now. I know they are. Should we, should we, Ga be... Gav's going to start a website, moistsump.com, <laughs> put some gnarly stuff on it. <laughs> Merchandise leak. It's definitely a shirt coming up more It's like, it's like the, the new Rick roll. <laughs> We're going to wrap it up here. The car's usable, but it needs a whole bunch of other stuff done. It needs, uh, Kai's going to do a wheel alignment on it, so the whole, everything is brand new and, and different, so it's got to have a good wheel alignment done on it. It's going to do that this afternoon, I think. Um, and we're going to just leave it as it is for the moment while I work out with Nelson how we're going to address the problem. Um, but we, we don't want to pull it apart yet because we are going to take it to uh, All Japanese Day, which is at Earnshaw State College on the 27th, 27th yeah. of March. Uh, which, which will probably be this week if you're watching it on Wednesday. Yeah, yeah I think so. Yeah. Um, so that's in Benyo. Um, in Queensland, if you're a Brisbane local or Sunshine Coast, we're gonna have merchandise. There. We'll bring it down there, and we might bring the um, the other the new crown with a with a packet of merch in the back and a tent or something. No one knows about that crown. Well, they will soon. Yeah, true. So that's it for the moment. Yeah, thanks, Kai. You're an absolute legend. Thanks, Kai. Thanks once everyone. again, always no impresses with his skills. Always a pleasure. Uh, and. I'm pretty happy with the outcome, even though we know there's an issue, but to, to be able to sort of plug through things and, and see changes using data is always a good thing. I like, to, I like the scientific side of things where you actually know that you're, that you're making improvements and, and you're on the right track, so it's all good. Definitely. And it also runs like a charm, and it was unbelievably shit before we bought it here. I believe it sounded awful, so yeah, cheers, Kai. No dramas. It's Gav Shout for lunch, mm -hmm. and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Kai getting the wheelie done. Nice uh, GT40 specifications. <laughs> you the man, Kai. <laughs> How much adjustment do you reckon is in these? Well, let's have a look. We'll see. It's definitely coming back. Beautiful. Hey, um, hey, Gav. You got a, you got a brake light out, mate. <laughs>
Hello David, hello Josie, hello Lucia, hello Mum. Love you all. Thank you for being so patient. Smoko van, maybe. Yeah. <laughs>